What's up Lunatics? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the Bait Laboratory. And we are going to be making some soft plastic jerk baits today. I got some awesome new molds in from Duet Molds. It's called the What's It Fork Tail Mold. And I'm going to show you the mold here in a second. But that's what we're going to be using. Basically making some flukes out here today in the garage. AKA the Bait Laboratory. So hopefully you're into that. We're going to do a pretty basic shad type color. Um, kind of like a pearlish color with maybe some green flake in there, maybe a little bit of black flake as well. Um, just something pretty simple. I really kind of just want to highlight these molds. These are pretty rad molds. So if you're into making your own plastics, love to fish soft plastic jerk baits like flukes or something like that, then this is the kind of the mold that you might want to start off with and uh, keep your colors pretty basic or just find the colors that you really like to, to fish and then just focus on those. Um, Duo Molds also has a laminate plate for this mold. Um, I think I'm going to get one here soon, but basically that's so you can have a real defined top color versus that bottom color. Um, and that laminate plate's really going to make it simple for you to do that, um, or simple for you to make that two-tone bait. But we're going to make a single color bait today, keep it simple, simple shad pattern color. Um, with that, maybe some green flake. I haven't really seen much shad patterns with a green. Um, flake. I've seen some violet type hues, stuff like that, but we're gonna kind of just go with it. I might change my mind as we as we go here, but pretty much gonna be like a pearl color with some, maybe some black flake and maybe some blue or purple or green, something like that. So let's get into this video. Let's make these flukes. Let's make these soft plastic jerk baits. Okay, so here's what we're working with in terms of molds. We have two of these molds, four cavity mold. Um, this is the four inch version right here. And as we pan back over, this is the five inch version. Um, these are the molds we're going to be using today. Looking forward to making these baits. Um, soft plastic jerk baits can really catch fish. So we're going to make these up. If you like to make them, follow along. If you don't like to make your own baits, but you just like watching the videos, follow along. Give this video a like. Make sure to subscribe to my channel as well. Okay, so what we got in the cup right now is some Do It Mold Soft Baits Crystal Clear Formula Plastisol. We got just over three quarter cup. So we're going to get this in the microwave. We're going to heat it up a little bit. And then I'm gonna decide as we go what color we're gonna put in there. One thing I like to do when I'm pouring or when I'm cooking Plastisol that I haven't put any color in or anything in is use some of this Plastisol stabilizer. It's gonna kill, help keep me from burning it. Obviously you still can burn the Plastisol, but it's gonna help you um, avoid that a little bit. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pour a little bit in here, just like that. And then we are gonna stir that in. And once we get stirred in, I'm gonna put this in the microwave. I'm gonna start off with two and a half minutes. I'll probably check it at two. And then I'll come back to you when this is ready to add some colorant into. Okay, so our Plastisol is ready. I just took its temperature and it was 367. So it definitely got hot enough. So I'm not gonna heat it anymore. I don't want it to discolor or anything like that. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take some black X2 colorant. I'm gonna drop two drops, oh, a little about three. A little bit runny and then we're gonna stir that in. I don't want it to be too dark, but I want it to have a little bit of a grayish kind of a hue, but nothing, nothing crazy. And the next thing I'm gonna add in there is some pearl powder. And you gotta get my measuring spoon out right here. And we are gonna give it a half, or we're gonna give it an eighth. That's probably about a quarter teaspoon put the top on otherwise this stuff will fly around a little bit you got to be careful mixing in the powders because if you just go go for it it'll start to kind of fly away on you because I got a fan blowing all these fumes outside out of the garage but my hope is that between this black that I put in there and this pearl it's gonna give me kind of like a kind of a shinier bait fish kind of a look which I think I'm caught I'm pretty much accomplishing what I was going for I kind of like that color and when i get the laminate plate for this mold too i might end up using this as a, a top color maybe with some blue in it or something like that i think that would be a really really cool color and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take almost a full scoop of this purple flake about like that and add it in and this is almost one cup this is about three quarter cup of plastisol 
So we'll have to kind of see what that purple does. I think that's enough purple. I don't want to put too much. I don't want the flake to be too crazy, but I do want some to come through. I think that's a pretty cool color right there. So we'll probably put this back in the microwave for just a little bit, and then we will shoot some baits. All right, so we are ready to go with our plastic. So we got it right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my injector and like I did in my last video, I oiled this up so it's nice and smooth. So we're gonna go into our plastisol right here, draw it up. Gonna go over to the first mold and we're gonna put even pressure down just like so. And I think I'll have enough in just this one injector in order to do the, the next mold as well. So we'll go over and then we'll go even pressure down again. Looks like I did have enough. While I'm doing two things at once, I'm gonna fill up the sprue right there. Top off the sprue here. Oh, I barely had enough there, so we'll top it off with our measuring cup. It's kind of a cool color. I'm really happy with how that turned out. All right, and then we just gotta wait for these to cool down and uh, see what they look like. Okay, so we're gonna check out these baits, see how they turned out. See if they look like they're fish catchers or not. Based on the color, the way it turned out, I definitely would use this color and I definitely think it'll catch some fish. So let's open up our mold here. Oh, I'm gonna have to reopen that one and close it up a little bit. These are a little snug. Let's see how these turned out. And I definitely think those would catch some fish. Nice little silver hue to them. I really like the way that purple uh, changed the color of these baits. I really think that that purple really looks good in there. Let's look, uh, look at the next batch of them. Got to open up this mold again. There we go. I'll hold them up closer so you guys can see them. But yeah, I definitely think these turned out real, real good. Really happy with that color, and I definitely think these would catch some fish. So one thing I forgot to do when I was mixing up this color is add salt to it. For soft plastic jerk baits, I really like to have salt in those baits because I want them to sink. Because a lot of times I don't use them weighted. I'll just throw them out there like on a spinning rod or something like that, and I want them to have a little bit of weight so I can cast them. And I also want them to have a little bit of weight so they sink. So I forgot to do that, so I literally just dried those off because I had them in the water so they cool down but I dried them off I put them back in the cup and I'm gonna remelt everything and we are going to add some salt in and re-pour these things because if I'm gonna fish them I want them to be how I want them so or how I like them so we're gonna add some salt to this mixture re-pour them and I might pour some little swim baits as well if um, I have enough plastic so when I'm adding salt to my baits this is what I use I just use popcorn salt like this you can just get it at the grocery store or something like that but this is what I've been using when I add salt to my baits a lot of times I'll add salt to my boss hogs which is a brush hog imitation and uh, other times if you want them to your worms or something like that but a lot of times you don't put them in worms but for the brush hogs I definitely like them um, the mold that I use is called the boss hog by dual molds cut a lot of fish on that and then obviously for these flukes and stuff like that, I want the salt in there. And then a lot of times when I'm making my little ripper swim baits, I'll want salt in those as well. And this is the salt that I'm using. All right, so we're at the point where we can add salt. Right here, I have a one cup measuring cup. And I'm gonna go almost to the top of it because from what my research has been, about one cup of plastisol to a quarter cup of salt is a general mixture when you're adding salt to your baits. So I don't have quite a cup, so I'm gonna stir this in there. I should have been stirring as I was pouring it, but too focused on talking to you guys. So I'm gonna keep on stirring here. And uh, this is going to soften the plastic up as well. Um, so you're gonna have to deal with that a little bit. Obviously that stuff's cold going in there, so it's gonna cool your temperature down. Um, so I'm gonna have to heat this back up and keep on stirring it all in there so it's nice and stirred in and then one thing you want to do when you add salt to your baits is you want to stir your plastic a lot because sometimes that salt will settle at the bottom of your cup and the bottom baits are going to have way more salt than the top baits will so what you want to do is just make sure that this is stirred a lot and stirred evenly so that way you have consistent baits 
Okay, so I had my plastisol in there for about 40 seconds. So I'm gonna stir it up real good and then I'm going to get my injector and we are going to make up some of these baits. You can definitely tell a difference when you get that salt into the into the plastic versus when there's none. But like I said, for these baits, I definitely want the salt because I want them to have some weight and I want them to be able to sink. You can definitely feel that this whole mixture is thicker. You can just tell that this is a different consistency than, than when you have no salt. Then go over to the next one. Even pressure on down. And like the last ones, I'm gonna top off that sprue with my hand while I'm holding pressure on the other one. And then even up the sprues like so. It was kind of a mess, but I had to roll with it. Everything was stuck together. So we'll check those out in a second. So while the jerk baits are cooling down, I figure we might as well use the time wisely and make up some swim baits. I got three inch rippers in these molds right here. So we'll make two of them. And I uh, just gotta get this plastisol back ready to go. I gotta heat it up just a little bit longer. I'm gonna get some of that stuff from the side back in there. You don't have to do that and you kind of end up having to heat it up a little bit more but i like having a little bit more in my cup i feel like i can draw that plastic up a little bit better so that's why i put that stuff back in there okay so the plastisol should be good to go give it one more stir before we get going yep that looks like a good consistency to draw up some of that take our injector draw up our plastic Come over to our rippers. Takes hardly any plastisol to fill these guys up. These are small little swim baits. So top off that sprue. Next one, hold that pressure down. These make for some great swim baits to go on like a ball head or darter head, something like that. Um, you could probably drop shot them as well if you wanted to but they're killer little baits, super versatile. I'll show you guys what they look like all said and done here once they cool down. So once again, I made a decision. Right here, we got the six inch ripper mold. We're gonna make one big swim bait. And I put it up, I put my plastisol up on this little guy right here to tilt my cup so I can get as much plastic out of there as possible because it takes almost this entire injector to pour one of these six inch rippers. So I'm gonna put that even pressure on down I'm gonna hold that pressure good and you gotta hold it pretty good. I get some denting from time to time on the belly of this bait. So I'm gonna hold that pressure a little bit more. Um, I think it might be a little bit of a venting issue. It could be me pouring too hot or too cold. I haven't been able to really pinpoint what my specific issue is with this mold, but um, sometimes it could be venting and that's easy to fix. You can do that yourself for sure. So I've been holding that pressure for a little bit. So we're gonna pull up, top off the sprue. The extra's gonna go right back in. And then this draws out a lot of plastic. So I'm gonna stand by right here and wait for that to, the sprue to kind of suck down. And then I'm gonna add a little bit more of the plastisol from the cup here. If, if need be, I may not, but we'll see here in a second. I, I'm just gonna top it off a little bit more just to make sure it's all topped out. It's probably gonna be all that it takes, but I'll check back in with you guys and we'll open up all these baits at one time. Okay, well it's time to check out how these baits turned out. Right here, we have our six inch ripper. We have our five inch what's it fork tail jerk baits. We have the four inch version right here. And then right here we have two three inch rippers. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go with the five inch what's it check those out first and just for your own knowledge these are cool molds i'm not opening these up hot with no gloves on you definitely want to wear the gloves but i really like how these turned out they they turned out better in my opinion with that salt in them and uh these would catch fish 100 percent. i really like how like that gray color is um i think i might try something a little bit different next time but i definitely think that these would catch fish i don't see why not definitely looks like a shadow imitation to me so let's get these over into the bath then we're going to open up the four inch versions right now 
check them out. These look really good too. These would be great when you have real small bait fish. You could put this on an underspin, something like that. These will definitely, definitely catch some fish. Um, let me give you a little bit better of a close up right there. Four inch version. Put those in the bath. And then we'll go over to our first ripper. Show you guys what these look like. These are really cool baits. I really, really like these. I've caught fish on these in the past, but, uh, but yeah, little swim bait, great on a darter head, great on a ball head, something like that. Put that one in the bath. Open up the next one. And there's another one. This one turned out better than the last one. I had a little bit of dimpling in the last one, but that's a good shot of it right there. And then it's time to check out the big guy, the six inch ripper. Pull those screws over to the side. Open up the big boy right here. And like I said in the, in the filming of this one, for whatever reason, I'm getting dimpling in that spot consistently. I don't know why, um, but I definitely need to figure it out. But overall, if I didn't get the dimpling in there, that's a good looking big swim bait. I definitely think something would go out and eat this. If it, it could be a great gizzard shad imitation for the for your lakes that have those gizzard shad stuff like that. I might definitely think this is something that would entice the bass to eat it. But uh, that's kind of what you're looking at if you get one of these molds for yourself. But I'm gonna have to figure out that dimpling problem so that way I can get some more consistency out of these baits. Well, it's gonna do it for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed watching me make these, these different baits. I had that What's It mold. I also had the two different types of ripper molds. Um, all those baits that I just made, they will all catch fish. I'm very, very confident in that. I've caught fish on the rippers. Um, I haven't had a chance to fish the six inch ripper very much, but I have, I've seen it in the water and I definitely think it has a good rolling action to it. I definitely think it could get a big bite. Um, I will be fishing those what's it's here in the near future. Um, especially once these lakes open up around me, I'm definitely going to be out there. I definitely have a lake in mind to throw those soft plastic jerk baits that I made. Um, that color would catch them here too. Uh, play around some other colors, maybe try to get a little bit less of a pearl in there, something a little bit more translucent, but I definitely think that color turned out okay, and I definitely think it would catch fish. But um, I really hope you guys enjoyed watching me make these baits. Um, this is definitely something you guys can do yourself. As always, the links to all these different products are going to be down in the description of this video. If you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment. If you just want to say a nice video, I like the way those baits look, leave those messages down in the comments. I'd really appreciate it. I really appreciate each and every single comment that i get in all of my videos it means the world to me when you guys want to have a conversation want to leave a message for me in these videos if you're new to the channel and you like the video please give it a thumbs up and please give it give me a subscribe to my channel i'd really really appreciate that um, as always thank you guys for watching thank you for taking the time to watch my videos and as always we got more content coming your way from the bait laboratory from the lake so stay tuned for that thanks again i'll see you guys later bye